can you smell la 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 that the rock is on autopilot Ooh, that's a hot mug guy hi guys this is my review for red notice this is the latest dwayne johnson film on netflix and this was a pretty big deal for Netflix. This was the most expensive film that they had ever made with a budget of 160 million, 1 million, at least according to IMDb, more than The Irishman. And it has Johnson playing an FBI profiler, yeah, sure, chasing after Ryan Reynolds and Gal Gadot, who are two highly acclaimed thieves. They are under the Red Notice banner, which is the highest degree of criminalization in terms of international criminals. Ryan Reynolds, once again, plays a different version of himself, being a quippy guy while also being an expert thief. And then Gal Gadot is also another thief who is just there and good at her job too. Now, to be honest, this isn't exactly the most ingenious or creative idea that Dwayne's come up with in the last little while. If anything, it's kind of an amalgamation of all of the generic ideas that he's had and all the generic films that he's been in and it just kind of comes together in this big piece of genericness. While you have such massive star power in this film, it doesn't help get the film out of ankle high water in terms of entertainment to be honest the choices that are made in this film are obviously kind of a relationship to budget and to production and to scheduling now it was very interesting to me that they kept on talking about how high the budget was for this movie and at least 20 million each went to Dwayne Ryan and Gal Gadot. So where the hell did the other hundred million go? How come everything in this movie looks fake as shit? The special effects are truly awful. You want a good example? Look up the bullfighting scene. The bull looks fake and everything around them looks fake. But then there's a wide shot where Ryan and Dwayne are out running the bull and it's clearly CGI versions of them this almost in spot and on top of that i don't think a single place that they shoot in in this film is an actual location they are all sets they are all sets even the tropical locations are sets i swear they all have this fake as ass look to them and maybe that might have been why this was so expensive because they kept on having to build sets and that's just the beginning of kind of the issues that you have because you've got a story that is very uneventful very boring you don't care it is a very generic version of every single heist movie you've ever seen at least even with generic stories or generic kind of ish heist movies like national treasure that one's beloved because it has to do with american history or in some cases at least when these movies are being made there is history to them i feel like they just do one segment of that there's one little bit in the film where they actually talk about the history of cleopatra's eggs but not even actually from cleopatra's time just the nazis and it's not a fulfilling aspect the tension with everyone in this movie is completely lacking. Ryan is trying, I swear, his hardest to keep the movie out from Slumberville, but he goes too hard. He's too much of himself. He is essentially Deadpool without the mask on and without being able to kill people, which that's another thing. As I was watching the movie, I noticed that no one really dies. And if you look in the IMDb credits, no one actually dies. Not a single person in this entire movie dies. Which, when you're doing an action movie of this kind of caliber, how does no one die? Is there some good parts to this movie? You're kind of stretching, to be honest. At one point where this car chase is about to happen, the rockets in this Porsche, which I don't know how he fits in it, and it pumps you up to think that there's about to be this awesome car chase, but in the end, he can't even get out of the parking lot without getting into a car accident. That was the first joke that made me laugh. Then the second joke, was this bad guy who, this British dude who has the most theatrical kind of accent and demeanor about him. He's clearly a theater major. <laughs> At one point he's talking about this pistol and he says, ah, this was, oh wait, hang on, I gotta try and do the accent. This pistol was my father's prized possession. I've kept it close to me ever since I killed him with it. And that's it. As I said, Ryan is funny in this movie, but he does get a bit much. And then Dwayne, holy shit. Talk about a guy who is on autopilot. He's not even trying in this movie. I think he is literally believing the presence of himself in this film. Something that I kept on thinking of when I was watching this movie is that this is a very bad version of True Lies without the whole espionage bit in terms of a big muscular dude doing stuff that really a big muscular dude couldn't do, but it's funny because it's Arnold. Except that doesn't work here. It's not funny because it's Dwayne. It's just not funny. If anything, the end of the movie does leave you with this kind of idea that maybe if this bit had been the whole movie, 
maybe that would have been actually really fun to see. Instead, you have to sit through nearly two hours before you're actually kind of invested in anything that's happening with the characters or the movie itself. Overall, Red Notice is a big flop, in my opinion, for Netflix. This is probably the worst movie that they've ever put out, and I'm including the really bad anime adaptations, I'm including all of the bad romantic comedy movies, because those ones did not cost nowhere near as much money as this one did. This one cost more fucking money than the Al Pacino, Robert De Niro reunion that y'all have been really waiting for since Heat. This movie? In the end, Red Notice is flat on its entry, flat on its midway, and flat on its exit. It is just a very flat and boring movie. For people who liked these kind of movies back in the 90s, maybe you might enjoy it because it kind of has some reminiscent values to that, but very poorly done. So in the end, I'm gonna give Red Notice a 1 out of 7. And that's based on the promotion for this thing, that's based on the budget that this thing had, it's based on everything that was pumping this bloody movie up. This film is just as boring as its title is. I, I don't know how this movie cost this much. I really hope that the Corridor Crew guys do a breakdown of the VFX for this movie, because it's shite. Anyways guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time.